So let's have a look at the graph editor. So I'm just going to open it up. Like this. Um, I'm just going to make my viewport a little bit more readable. So I'm just going to dock him there. Let's hide the outliner for the time being and hide that. So we've just got these two. Right. So first thing you do if you want to create a graph is you just click on this one. And it makes this graph, Bifrost graph one. Here in the outliner, uh, there, you can see we've got this Bifrost graph. You can rename that. There you go. And you can have more than one in here. I could make another one here now if I clicked on that. It would make a new one. I'm not going to bother doing that. But you can have multiple graphs in Maya. So when you make it, you get these, by default, these two nodes, an input and an output. The input one is empty, so we can just sort of delete that for the time being. We're going to bring in our own input. Um, so I'm just going to make a plane, and that's what I'm going to bring into it. Just do that, get rid of the grid. So I'm just going to middle mouse that in, and you can see this is fundamentally an input node, um, but it's renamed it as a plane shape. If you want to see the names of these nodes, you can go to show node type and it will tell you. That can be really handy actually when you're looking at graphs because some people rename them and it can be really confusing. Um, so, brought this in. Um, one of the things to sort of say about what's going on inside here is that by Frost, this graph editor and the whole uh, uh, visual programming stuff that goes on it is all separate to Maya. It's not, it's not something inside of Maya. It's an external piece of software that's running on its own. So it doesn't really care about Maya in that sort of sense. It doesn't, doesn't, it's not looking at it, asking what's going on. It's just looking at what's been brought in. So, which is a sort of concept that's quite not difficult to get head around, but you sort of need to sort of know that it doesn't care about Maya really. So what you do is you bring something in from Maya brings it in, um, you do something to it, I'm not going to do anything to this, I'm just going to output it, so basically brought it in, output it out again, um, it sends it back to Maya as this BIF shape, this BIF1, um, and if I move that up, or along, actually let's just let's move it along, so we can see you've got the original plane, and we've got this BIF shape. And you see they're exactly the same size, same amount of faces, because we haven't done anything to this. We just brought it in and we've exported it out. So you bring it into the Bifrost world, you do something to it, I think in this case, and then it you send it back to Maya. And this is how this is the fundamental workflow of it. So um, what I'll do is I'll just do a very quick demonstration of the very basics of uh, sort of making sort of node connections and just talk about some of the aspects of what, what was going on in here um, and then we'll start talking about making fire. So you bring in an object um, then you output it. What happens when you're bringing it in is you're bringing in all the data of this plane. Um, if I right click this and go add watch point this is what you're bringing in. You're bringing in all the information about the face component, the face offset, face vertex, all these things, which are, is what makes up this plane that you see in Maya. Maya's doing all this stuff that you see here to make this happen in the background. And it tells you here what they're called, all these properties. It also tells you um, how many are there of them, and what sort of, and this is quite important, what type of data they are. So here there is 101 face offset elements, and they are an array of uint, which is an unsigned integer. Or we've got the face vertex normals, there's 121 of them, and they're an array of math float threes. So there's this different sort of data that's coming through here. An array, if you don't know what they are, is basically a list of numbers. Um, so these are a list of numbers so we've got one here say point position um, and that is 121 elements it's an array of math float 3 and that is basically the position that's my uh, of every one of these vertices in world space so that's going to be the XYZ of each one of those vertices 
and that's why this is a float 3. A float 3 is basically three numbers. So this is going to be an array that's in a list of three numbers per vertex. Um, and though not massively important for us now, but it gets more important later on about these different sorts of types of data and how you sort of have to sort of manage them and, and work out what's what they are when you sort of query them as it were. Right, so let's close that. So let's just do a very little basic thing to sort of show how this works. So we looked at the point position. I can access that by doing get point position. And it makes this little node here. And what this is is it's got an input for the geometry and what it does is it outputs that list on its own of point positions. So if I draw this in and you can see this one's the sort of lilac -y colour, that's a sort of lilac -y colour and that shows they're the same type of port. And this is again this data thing. Certain things we can only take in certain types of data. So this is bringing in an object which is what these sort of uh, lilac coloured little buttons are or, or inputs. So when you mouse over them you can see at the bottom it tells you what they are. So this is an amino object and it's outputting, as we saw before, an array of math float 3. So an array of a list of those three numbers that makes up each of these points. It gives us its world space transformation. So I've got that. What can I do with it? Well, I could go add. So I could add. So I connect that. So I want to add that, but I need to add it to something. So I'm going to right click this and go create value node. So it's going to make a value node for me. Um, by sort of default it's looked at this and seen it's an array of float threes and it's made my value a float three so you can see here we've got these three numbers um, and we can see we've got slightly different little uh, inputs and output nodes here little little handles um, when I've got this sort of little line it means they're auto ports so they're sort of guessing what you're bringing into them. So this is guessed correctly that this is an array of float threes, and this is guessing that we're going to need an array of float threes to add to this one. The little dots means telling us that it's an array. It has a list of numbers in it, and you see this outputs an array as well. So I'm just going to add 10 to the y. So that's going to be an x, y, z. I'm adding 10 to the y and I've added that to every single one of these point positions. I now need to sort of apply that back to the mesh. So I need a set point position. So I go set point position. And you can see that's looking for, again, a float three array of numbers. So we can plug that into that. But it's also looking for, for the geometry that we we are talk that we want to set this point position on. So you have to sort of add that to that and then just put that there. And you see he jumped up 10 units. Um, if I just go back to the attribute editor and zero that out, you can still see the transforms are still all zero, 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 but he's now gone, he's moved up 10. And so if I did Two, drop down. If I did ten there, he's going to move over there. And that is a very basic graph. So what we have here is we've got this graph, and if we click on this, we can see they all have their sort of parameters. Obviously, this is just a sort of input and output. There's not much going on there, but it has an info tab, tells you all about it, which can be very handy. We've got an add which has an output and then we've got these and we can add more if I wanted to add another node to that and add that as one we could do or ten is it moving away um, and you can see these values these have parameters here that we can change because we set them up um, we can also go into here we click on this and we can change what type of value it is and this is quite important for quite a few nodes in here that you need to sort of implicitly tell it what sort of data it is and this is where you do it so you can either these are all single numbers 
or strings um, and you have different types of those then we have vectors which are groups of numbers and then we have matrices which are to do with transforms a bit com more complicated and then we have some other ones that we can add just sort of random ones um, and we can make these all into arrays into lists of numbers so this is a sort of quite important thing to sort of get your head around um, and we have the info on it which is actually not much info on a value because it's just basically a value so that's the sort of basic structure brought something in I got some information some of its data I then changed its data and I set that data back onto the object and I outputted it and that is the basic workflow of what happens here <laughs>